And a very warm welcome to our Friday special broadcast, the 3rd of April 2020, also corresponding with the 9th day of Sha'aban 1441. My name is Zainab Bin, I will be in your company until about 3 pm, inshallah. And very shortly, you can listen to the live Nasiha Dania in studio by senior lecturer at Medina Institute, also the Imam of Majid al Hayr, Sheikh Zaid Fatar, and that in a short while. Also, don't miss, we will be having the Dhuwar Salah at about 1 o'clock, inshallah, followed by a dua for major illnesses shortly after that with some beautiful adhkar at half past one taking you straight into the two o'clock news and of course at uh, 10 past two you can join us for table talk a forum for all your family matters for now sheikh zaid fatar senior lecturer at medina institute also the imam of the majid al khair um, joins us in studio for today's um, nasiha inshallah also do visit our facebook page as this is a live stream on the facebook page as well sheikh assalamu alaikum and shukran so much for being here Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Zainab, how are you doing? Very well, alhamdulillah. And Juwan, barak to you. Juwan, barak to you as well, mashallah. And to the family, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feek. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa sayyidu al-mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yasli amri wa hlul uqadatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. First and foremost to all the listeners of Radio 786 and to the viewers on Facebook on the live stream. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. First and foremost, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors, the bounties, the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. And we place salawat and taslim upon the Lord Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim as a means of barakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention in the Holy Quran. بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا نبل ونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون صدق الله مولانا العظيم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautifully makes mention of the different calamities and the different trials and tribulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place human beings through. And what the beauty of this ayah is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of these particular things in order for us to understand that it's a reality that we are going to face. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ Then indeed we are going to test you with fear that you will have. And when we speak about fear, Jamaat al-Muslimin, we talk about all categories of fear. Whether the person is fearing for his finance, whether the person is fearing for his life, whether the person is fearing for his family, whether the person is fearing for whatever he might fear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is a reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test us with. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues by saying, وَالْجُوعِ and hunger as well, that we are going to be and certain times or at certain times, times where we will not be able to understand or even comprehend or imagine where are we going to get our food. There will be moments where we'll be hungry to the, to the degree of really feeling hopeless. But these are part of the trials and tribulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places us through. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ And as well, loss of money. We're going to face situations where the business is not doing well where your job is not doing well, where things are tight financially, where you are worried what is going to happen because money is disappearing left, right and center. These are the tests that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we are going to face. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues and says, well, anfusi wa thamarat. And we are going to face the test of loss of life and also the beautiful things within the dunya. How many people do we remember that were with us today on this particular date and are no longer with us. How many people were there yesterday and they're no longer with us today? How many people are with us that were just a week ago, or two weeks ago, or even minutes ago, hours ago, and they're no longer with us, Jamaat al-Muslimin? This is a reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He will place us through all of these trials, through all of these tribulations. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives glad tidings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us hope. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ But glad tidings for those that show patience and they persevere. They have that hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have that iman and that yaqeen and that tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to a degree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when these calamities hit them, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ That when these calamities hits them, and when they face these difficulties, what do they say? What do they believe in? What is the state of mind? What is the state of heart? They say that indeed everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ That verily upon them is blessings and mercies and salutations upon them and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be placed upon them. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ And verily they are the ones or those are the ones that are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now when we are looking at the times that we are facing, today Jamaat al-Muslimin specifically with the of course the COVID-19 and the coronavirus that is spreading not only in South Africa or in Cape Town specifically but in the world it's not just the Ummah of Cape Town that is facing it's not just the Ummah of South Africa but the world in its entirety is facing this calamity and this gives us an understanding to first and foremost know that this is something that can only happen by the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us that we'll be tested with these things. You know, one of the beautiful imams and great ulama, Sheikh al-Imam al-Sha'rawi, he says that when you understand this particular ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us and informs us that we'll be tested with all of these things, he says that in a way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prepared us even before we faced the calamity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us that tools and that means in order to make sure that we are ready when we face these calamities. And he explains beautifully and he takes each and every term and he explains and he says, for instance, when Allah says we are going to be faced with fear, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not order us to show that khushu' in our salah, to show that complete humility and absolute sort of submission and fear of one losing focus in salah or losing the ability to make salah or losing the ability to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we make our salah as if it's our last salah is that not installed in us and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just uh, two ayat before this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what we need to use in order to seek refuge where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu istainu bis sabri wa salah O oh, you who believe again people that have conviction in Allah people that merely does not just utter la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah but they have it within their hearts they internalize the shahada they internalize la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah these people allah is speaking to and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu o you who believe and jamaat muslimin this is now the test to us we claim that we have iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here's the test. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Istainu bis sabri was salah. That when you seek refuge, seek refuge with sabr, patience, and salah. And Imam al Shahrawi says, When somebody enters into salah, what do they say? They say, Allahu Akbar. Which, what is the declaration that the person is basically doing there? He's basically saying, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest. But with that also in the same breath, what he's declaring is that, Ya Allah, there is nothing more greater than you. Once I enter into the salah, this is what the greatest thing I can do. So you completely cut yourself off from the dunya. That you are focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That nothing is greater to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No disease, no illness, no the calamity no difficulty is greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the creator of difficulties Allah is the creator of tribulations Allah is the creator of test and so therefore when I connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is more greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min al khawfi so that fear is installed within us when we make that salah that we stand in, in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa naqsim min al amwal ju'i and when we look at the hunger that Allah speaks about he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not order us to fast a month of Ramadan that for 30 days of the year Allah prepares us for that calamity when it hits us that for 30 days we are able to control our nafs and our desires and the way that we eat for 30 days by the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we look at naqsim min al-amwali loss of wealth did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not order us to give zakah 
and to give sadaqa khud min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihim biha allah says in the holy quran take from their wealth a portion that will be given to those that are worthy so that they may purify their wealth so they may purify themselves that particular order is a fad that we give zakah out and of course encourage that we give sadaqah to the poor people and those that are in need and those that fall under the category of sadaqah did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not inform us to do that and that will give us then the idea of preparation before before we face this particular calamity and then he says وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ and loss of life he says if you look at it Hajj becomes the symbol of that and it's so amazing that in our community our society it gives that understanding we know that we speak to our seniors they will tell you that and it, it happens today as well when you speak to the seniors they'll tell you that when people used to leave Hajj we would greet them as if we are never going to see them again. Why? Because this might be the last time you ever see them. Because of the way of transport, it was very difficult and it took very long for people to move from Cape Town to Makkah al Mukarrama. And because of the long time that it took, some people lost their lives during this whole journey. And that is how they greeted these people. That when they came up to these people, they greeted them as if they are now going and returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet we still find that practice today. That when people leave for Hajj, people are crying people are emotional because it's almost as if they are now returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these rituals and places it upon us in order for us to be ready and prepared when we face it and that is the beauty he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like the psychologist or the psychiatrist that has to first listen to our problems listen to the calamities listen to the trials and then provide for a solution though Allah gives us the solutions even before we face the problem Allah gives us the awareness and the information before we face the reality of these trials and these tribulations and that's why when we look at these people that face these particular things they already are have that mindset what is their mindset inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un that verily from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we come and not only ourselves but everything else that is creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything will return to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what are they declaring their jamaat al-muslimin they declaring their vulnerability and their weakness and their dependence on Allah. That, Ya Allah, I am absolutely nothing without you. Ya Allah, I cannot help myself if, if you give me your help, Ya Allah. If you assist me, Ya Allah. If you empower me, Ya Allah. If you give me strength, Ya Allah. Other than that, I won't be able to do absolutely nothing, Ya Allah. This is a declaration that of need concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we beg in and we plead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us, to assist us. Because indeed, the ulama, they say, Man wajad Allah faqad wajad wa man faqid Allah fala madha lahu an yajid. Who loses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is there to be found but if a person finds allah what more can a person gain and that is again the state of the person's mind what is your state when you look at things because of course people can come with different perspectives somebody can come with a negative perspective and look at it as a punishment from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and somebody can look at it from a positive perspective to look at this is only happening through the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us and that's why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms us in the holy quran also in surah al-mulk ayah number two where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا the one meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that created death and created life so that he may test and see who are those that are going to come out the best. Now the best in Islam is not the person that is perfect Jamaat al-Muslimin. Nobody upon this dunya except the Anbiya and the Rusul can claim that they are the perfect creation. Other than that, and that is because of course they are infallible, they are sinless. Besides the Anbiya and the Rusul, nobody can claim infallibility. Nobody can claim that they are sinless. Nobody can claim that they are perfect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَخُلِقَ insanu ضَعِيفَ Mankind, human beings, they were created but weak. We are imperfect, Jamaat al-Muslimin. The significance of creation is imperfection. So what this deen is requiring from us is not perfection and will never require that from us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never expect cre perfection from creation because the creation is imperfect in the manner that it was created but what does the best mean the person that does it the perfect manner no 
perfection or let me say the best in Islam is not also the amount of things that we do. You know, sometimes people focus more upon the quantity instead of the quality. But what Islam wants from us, what Allah wants from us with this test, with this trial, with this tribulation is to see who is going to come out the most sincere as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the best Jamaat al-Muslimin. It's the quality that we produce in our actions, not necessarily the quantity and the amount of things that we can do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's the state of the heart. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Illa man atallaha biqalbin salim. The one who is going to be safe, the one that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that comes with a sound heart, a heart that is there for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore we find in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma asaba min musibatin fil ardi, wala fi anfusikum, إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِّنْ قَبْلِ أَنَّ نَبْرَأَهَا إِنَّ ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ يَسِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whatever calamity befalls upon you, fi ardi whether it be upon this dunya, wala fi anfusikum, or even within yourselves. Some of the Mufassireen mention that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the ardi earth, they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to natural calamities, natural disasters, like for instance droughts or earthquakes or hurricanes and all of these things that are out our hand that are not necessarily within our control. Wala fi anfusikum, also the, the difficulties that fall within ourselves. And the ulama explained the Mufassireen, al-Imam al-Tabari mentions, he says, all of the things that we find within ourselves that are uh, that are considered as challenges, these are part of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. Like what? Like sicknesses, like disabilities, like a person losing certain things upon this dunya, a person becoming hopeless upon this dunya, a person that is losing his family, a person that is losing his wealth, a person that is fearful for his life. These are the difficulties and the challenges that we find within ourselves. A person that is sick, a person that has an illness, all of these categories fall within the category of fi and fusi what you find within yourself of a musibah, of a calamity, illa fi kitabin min qabla an nabraha, except that it was found in a book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had documented already, meaning that nothing happens except by the qada and the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِكَيْ لَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلُّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, to give us an understanding on why he's mentioning this. He's saying, So that you may not become depressed on what you have missed. Meaning if some opportunity was given to somebody else and it missed you, that was decreed in a manner that would never have come your way. Why? Because it's by the qada and qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this particular thing was decreed for that person. Or this particular thing as well, when it hits you or something good comes your way, then it's not because of my own credit, my own effort, but it's a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ And don't also celebrate too much, be joyful of yourself with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. In what sense? That you think that everything is good, everything is all right. I don't have to improve myself. I don't have to better myself. Everything is going smooth in my life. So Allah says, don't celebrate too much about that because that is only through the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is giving your haq, but the haq of Allah must still be given. The haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must still be given. This is in Surah Hadid, Ayah 22 to Ayah 23. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ that no calamity can befall upon you except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever has faith in Allah, conviction in Allah, believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will guide his heart. Allah will grant him hidayah. Allah will grant him guidance upon this dunya. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above everything is all knowledgeable. And therefore hadith that is narrated by Suhaib, he mentions that the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, عَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ إِنَّ أَمْرُهُ كُلُّهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ إِلَّا الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ صَرَّاءٌ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ ذَرَّاءٌ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ That the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, how shocking and how astonishing and how interesting is the state of a true believer a person that has iman a person that has complete conviction in their heart with absolutely no doubt in amruhu kullu khair that his whole matter everything about him is khair every single thing is good 
وليس ذلك لأحد إلا المؤمن and you will not find that except in a true believer that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in أصابته سرا when good comes his way glad tidings comes his way righteousness comes his way شكرا he shows gratitude to Allah he does not claim it for himself because indeed he knows it's only by the will of Allah that Allah places favor upon him and that's why one of the great ulama they say that the true essence of shukr is not to be amazed by the by the favor that Allah grants you but be amazed by the one that bestowed the favor upon you always say what these great favors that Allah gives us alhamdulillah why you are referring the credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to yourself so yeah the Nabi Sussam says when good comes his way shakar Allah he shows that gratitude and that thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shukr can be implemented in many ways Jamaatul Muslimin of those manners is to a person to say literally alhamdulillah utter in the words of alhamdulillah or a person is able to even show shukr in his actions by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the person also can show shukr by his state of heart concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he shows satisfaction and he shows pleasure to the decree and the the, the, the destiny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created for him. So it's good for him. He says, Shakar Allah, good comes his way, he shows gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When asabatu dharra and when bad comes his way or harm comes his way, sabara. He shows patience. Why? Because he knows this can only happen by the qada and qadr of Allah. No matter who of creation tries what, they cannot do anything except by the permission of Allah. And then the Nabi says, فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ This then becomes a good thing for him because of his reaction, Jamaat al-Muslimin. The, 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 the focus, or let me say, the, the point is not to try to find the perfect moment or the perfect place or the perfect human being or the perfect circumstances. It is to deal with the circumstance, with the person, with the environment, with the difficulty in the perfect manner because you won't be able to make something perfect but you can deal with it in the perfect manner and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah Ali Imran ayah 154 Kul inna al-amra kulluhu lillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says indeed the matter the entire matter of all of creation it is only in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore when we think about having a state of iman within ourselves it reminds me of the hadith where the Nabi alayhi wa sallam at least Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu he narrates his hadith and he says that of course Jibreel alayhi wa sallam came in a form of a man to the Nabi alayhi wa sallam uh, that he saw dark striking hair had a white thobe he had no other no signs of a traveler being on it, upon him and then he sits in front of the Nabi alayhi wa sallam and starts to question and one of the questions was mal iman what is what is faith asking the Nabi alayhi wa sallam what is faith what is belief and the Nabi alayhi wa sallam says an tu'minu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhir wal qada khayrihi wa sharrihi that you believe in Allah you believe in the angels you believe in the books you believe in the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you believe in the day of qiyamah and you believe in the qadr in the decree of Allah whether we see it to be good or whether we see it to be bad everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why the Nabi alayhi wa sallam says to Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ya ghulam inni yu'allimuka kalimat my son let me teach you a few words ihfadillah yahfaduk protect Allah and Allah will protect you. What does this mean? What's the interpretation? Meaning, protect your deen and Allah will protect you. Ihfadillah tajid hu tujag. Protect your deen in the manner, in that manner, and you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be there for you. Ida sa'alta fas'alillah. When you ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ida sta'anta fasta'in billah. And when you seek refuge and seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa'alam and verily know. أن الأمة لو اجتمعت على أن ينفعوك بشيء لم ينفعوك بشيء قد كتبه الله إلا ما قد كتبه الله لك that if the whole ummah had to gather together in order to benefit you and give you something that might be يعني beneficial to you they won't be able to benefit you except if Allah had written it out وإن اجتمعوا على أن يضروك بشيء and if they had to gather together to harm you in any manner لم يضروك بشيء إلا ما قد كتبه الله لك they won't be able to harm you in any way 
except for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed for Rufi'atil Aqlam wa Jaffatil Suhuf. The pens has been raised and the ink upon the books has been dried. In another riwayah, Imam al-Sakhawi mentions that Rabbi alayhi wa sallam says, Ta'arraf ila Allah fil raha ya'arifuka fil shidda. Know Allah during the easy times and Allah will know you through the difficult times. Wa'alam anna ma akhtaq lam yakun liusibak. And whatever had missed you would never have come your way. If it did not come your way, khalas intaha, it would never have come your way because Allah had not decreed for it. وَمَا أَصَابَكَ And whatever comes your way, the Ma'ali Sussam says, لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْتِعْ It would never have missed you. وَعْلَمْ And verily know, أَنَّ النَّصْرْ مَعَ الصَّبْرِ That victory comes with patience. وَأَنَّ الْفَرْجْ مَعَ الْكَرْبِ And opening will come with those doors that are closed in front of you. وَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى And definitely with difficulty you will find ease. And therefore it gives us this understanding. And we find it in the eye where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ That nothing can be willed for except by the will of Allah. We cannot will for anything except by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how when we think of the tila'a that we are facing today, Jamaat al-Muslimin, it is only through the decree and what Allah had destined for us. Nobody will be able to stop it and nobody will be able to prevent it. Nobody will be able to even force it to happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the day, ala kulli shay'in qadir. Verily, he is powerful over everything. And nowadays, you know, you find that people debate between one another. How is what, How do we understand what is the reason of this ibtila? What is the reason why we are being tested like this? And of course, people come with their different interpretations and their different perspectives. Some saying it's a punishment from Allah. Some saying, no, this is a means of rahmah from Allah. Some even try to interpret it to be some political issues that we're facing. Some even go to a degree of social. Some people, you know, everybody comes with their own paradigm, their own interpretation, their own perspective on why these things happening. But the one thing that we need to keep very, very much in mind Jamaat al-Muslimin is that first and foremost no matter what a reason we come up with it's not a reason to condition Allah Allah does not work according to how we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond what we think and Allah's power is beyond our power and Allah's ilm is beyond our ilm and Allah's wisdom is beyond our wisdom so therefore one thing that we need to keep in mind is that we cannot condition why Allah does certain things in certain ways according to how we understand it and that's why the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a very beautiful hadith the Nabi alayhi wa sallam says in a'zam in, in al-jaza'u ma'a'zam al al-bala that indeed the, when, when reward is great, the ibtila becomes great. The challenge becomes great. The tribulation becomes great. And when Allah loves a people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests them. So, so satisfaction, he will then gain the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever shows dissatisfaction and anger, then indeed he will receive the anger and the dissatisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith is quoted in Imam Tirmidhi. And that's what the Rabbi Sussam says in another hadith. ما من مصيبة تصيب المسلم إلا كفر الله عنه بها حتى شوكة يشاكها وهذا في الصحيحين. The Nabi Ali Sussam says there is no difficulty or calamity that falls upon a Muslim except that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wipes out of him sins. Even when a thorn pricks him, that prick becomes a means of maghfirah for him. And one of the great ahadith really that stood out for me concerning trials and tribulations is the hadith at Umm Salama radiallahu anha. She writes, the wife of the Nabi Ali she says, Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakul, ma min abdin tusibu musibatun fayakulu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raja'oon, Allahumma jirni fi musibati wa khluf li khayran minha, illa ajruhu ajrahu Allahu ta'ala musibatahu wa akhlafa she says that I heard the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that there is no slave that a difficulty befalls upon him except that he should say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon and then he makes a dua and he says Allahumma jinni fi musibati ya Allah grant me reward through my difficulty wa khluf li khayran minha and ya Allah replace me better than what that which I lost and the Nabi alayhi wa sallam says if a person does this Allah will grant him what he seeks and she then says falamma tawaffa abu when her husband, because of course Umm Salama 
was married before the, she married the Nabi والسلام, and her husband was martyred. So فلما توفى, when her husband died, قلت كما أمرني رسول الله. I did what the Nabi والسلام, told me to do and that is إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون and making that dua. So she says فأخلف الله لي خيرا منه and then Allah granted me better than what I had. Who was that? None other than the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted her much more better than that what she had before. So we have to be wary and we have to be cautious in the way we explain or describe calamities to Jamaat al-Muslimin. Because not all calamities are meant to punish people. Yes, there are calamities that are meant to punish people as we find within our tradition. But it's only through the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah places these things. In actual fact, if Allah wanted, Allah could have leave us on that disobedience and not give us any signs and we might have ended up in Jahannam but these difficulties becomes a means of what of wakening ourselves up to see what is the reality of our situation what are we doing wrong what are we doing that is problematic and without identifying problems Jamaat al-Muslimin will never be able to provide solutions so we have to look at ourselves and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ whatever difficulty also comes and befalls upon you it could be also that what that it's through the, the, the earning or the gaining of what you have done what you accumulate uh, uh, through your own actions and through your own effort. So therefore we can understand that it can happen both ways. It could happen in a means that in ibtila is there as a means of what? Of rahmah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those that are going through difficulties and Allah wants to remove their sins, Allah wants to forgive them. And it also could be that Allah is placing this difficulty as a means of punishment, but not because he's necessarily showing anger towards us but because Allah wants us to wake up and see and that's also through the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed the anbiya were the ones that went through the most difficulty and we know that they were sinless we know that they were infallible they did not commit any wrong they did not commit any sin and yet we find the Nabi alayhi salam saying ashaddu nas ibtila'an al-anbiya thumma al-amthal fal amthal that the people that go through the most tests are those people that uh, are the anbiya the rusul and uh, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the prophets, and they are the ones that go through the most difficulty and those that follow in their footsteps and those that follow in their footsteps. What is the, the issue at the end of the day, Jamaat al muslimin The question that we should not ask ourselves is not why are these things happening, but what does Allah want from me through these things? What is the reason that Allah is placing us through these calamities? Because indeed at the end of the day, Allah places these things down for us in order, no other reason but for us to become closer to Him, to realize the problems and realize our mistakes and our wrongs so that we make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we return to Him. And if it's not that kind of a means and it's through the rahmah of Allah that Allah is forgiving us through these difficulties and these calamities. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even shows us that Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abu al-Anbiya, he was as well placed through many tests where Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah, ayah 124, When Allah placed Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam through the different tra- challenges and the tribulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had placed him through. So therefore, again, thinking about these trials, thinking about these tribulations, it is something that is completely in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should be very careful, Jamaat al-Muslimin, in the way that we describe the reasons. You know, some people just look at it as a means of punishment for disobedience and so forth. We should not forget that the Sahaba Ridwanullah Ta'ala Ajmain also went through a similar aspect in Ta'un Amwas, the, uh, the story of what happened occurred during the time of Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu when they faced a similar difficulty of an illness uh, that spread between the people and this was during the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu and that illness took many people. It took, in actual fact, one of the great Al Imam Al Waqidi he mentions that that took 25,000 lives of the Muslimin. And we talk about from them as Sahaba and Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een, great of, uh, of the pioneers and the, the pious predecessors of our time. And we know how righteous and how salih these people were closer to the time of the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yet we find that Allah placed it upon them. Of the Sahaba that died during this plague was Abu Ubaid ibn al Jarrah, the one that was given glad tidings of Jannah, the one that the Nabi Alaihi Wasallam had called. Amin al Ummah, the one that is trustworthy of this Ummah, and he was of the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had honored to face many battles with the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of the Sahaba that went through the similar difficulty was Mu'ad ibn Jabal, and he was of the ulama of Sahaba and of those that narrated a lot of ahadith from the Nabi alayhi wa sallam. And not only that, he was the ambassador for the Nabi alayhi wa sallam 
to Al Yemen when the Nabi had sent him to Yemen. As well, we find Sahabi like Yazid ibn Abi Sufyan was also the ambassador of the Nabi to Bani Farraz in Qabil al Kanana. We find Suhail ibn Amr where the Nabi had given him a gift of a hundred ibl, hundred camels, so that he may know that the Nabi loves him. We find Darar ibn al Azwar who was one of the most richest people of Quraysh, of, of Medina al Munawa, and he had left everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and followed the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Nabi told him indeed you have made a deal that is successful and that is the deal of Iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Jannah and Abu Jandal ibn Suhail same thing Abu Jandal was one of the people that faced torture and punishment during his time when he became Muslim. A person that witnessed so many battles. A person that the Nabi had saw his righteousness in him. Yet this person as well died because of the plague and many other Sahaba. So therefore again, to look at why is this bit things happening, nobody will be able to come with a, a correct and absolute understanding. But that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and there are certain things that you might dislike, but it's good for you. And there are certain things that you might like, but it's bad for you. And only Allah knows. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So therefore, Jamaatul Muslimin, when we face these calamities, the best way of facing these calamities, first and foremost, before we take our precautions, is to face it with iman. It is to face it with tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is to face it with hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And tawakkul does not merely mean that you have to have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It ends there. No, Al-Imam, one of the great al-ulama, Al-Imam al kushayri explained that he, when we think about Iman, it's about putting the effort and leaving the result for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you take your necessary precautions. You do what you have to do in order to safeguard yourself, but you leave the rest and the result to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For indeed, this is only by the will and the qada and qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why one hadith, and I want to end off with this particular point, we said Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عندما سئل عن الطاعون the Nabi one day was asked about a plague what, what is the understanding of a plague why is a plague placed upon people and the Nabi said كان عذابا يبعث الله على من كان قبلكم that it was a means of Allah used to punish people that came before you but then the Nabi said فجعله رحمة للمؤمنين but Allah then made it a mercy to the true believers ما من عبد يكون في بلد there is no slave of a mu'min that he finds himself in a particular place and then the plague is there that he does not leave that particular place but he shows sabr and he takes the necessary precautions he takes certain measurements in order to protect himself that he knows that nothing can come his way except for what Allah had written out except that he will be given the ajr, the reward of a martyr, Jamaat al-Muslimin. This is mentioned in, uh, in Bukhari. Uh, and, and therefore, when we look at these particular things, we have to keep in mind that iman is key, faith is key, having hope in, mercy, in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is key. And one of the fundamental things that we need to do during this time is making sure that we make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uplifts us. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلَّنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَنَ اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tell them to say, order in us, لَنْ يُصِيبُنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ that nothing can come our way except for what Allah had written out for us. هُوَ مَوْلَانَا He indeed is our master. He indeed is our creator. He indeed is everything to us, Jamaat al-Muslimin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is placing us through these things so that we may realize where we're going wrong and so that we may realize how important Allah should be in our lives, how we need to prioritize Allah within our lives because wallahi these calamities will not raise until we change ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bikawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusim. Allah will not change the circumstance of a people until they change within themselves. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah, 
let the true believers have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and place their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves all the difficulties, all the calamities. May Allah grant health for all the people. May Allah grant strength for all the people, sabr and patience. And may Allah grant the health for those that are sick. And may Allah grant jannatul firdaus for all those that are passed on. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Wa salli lahumma ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And that was Sheikh Zaid Fatar, who is, of course, the senior lecturer at Medina Institute, also Imam of the Majid al Khair. We will have the live Adal now rendered by Sheikh Zaid. Sheikh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله الصلاة حي على الصلاة صلوا في الرحال صلوا في الرحال صلوا في الرحال اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت سيدنا محمد الوصيلة والفضيلة والدرجة العالية الرفيعة 
وبعث اللهم مقاما محمودا الذي وعدته وارزقنا شفاعته يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد الله أكبر إني وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض حنيفا مسلما وما أنا من المشركين إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا من المسلمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله